Welcome to MIGS Made Clear, where we break down microinvasive glaucoma surgery into bite-sized chunks so you can walk away with a much greater understanding and feel more MIGS confident. Today, we're going to talk about the MIGS classification of goniotomy slash trabeculotomy. By the way, my name is Dr. Constance Okeke, and I'm an Ivy League trained glaucoma specialist and cataract surgeon. This MIGS Made Clear six-part video series is supported through an unrestricted educational grant from New World Medical, Nova Eye Medical, and Sight Sciences. As we break down this class, we will first quickly review angle anatomy, then discuss the mechanism of action of this class, how the areas of resistance in the outflow system are affected, and then go into some detail on which MIGS procedures are available within this class. As we discuss each MIGS device, we will go over its key features, the pros and cons, indications for usage, as well as contraindications to help with patient selection. So let's dive in. Whenever I have a medical student or optometry intern or ophthalmology resident shadowing me in the OR, it really does bring me great joy to break out a piece of paper and start drawing, describing angle anatomy, MIGS devices, and the mechanism of action. Seeing faces settle with understanding, then seeing them light up after witnessing the actual case as all the dots connect is really satisfying. So now it's your turn. Lesson one, review of angle anatomy. First, let's quickly look at the angle anatomy of the trabecular outflow system and the potential areas of resistance that can affect it so we can better understand the mechanism of action for this class of goniotomy slash trabeculotomy. This picture shows a direct gonioscopic view of the angle and the various structures that one should be able to identify. Let's go over each of them briefly. Schwabe's line is the anatomical boundary where the corneal endothelium transitions to the trabecular meshwork, serving as a landmark in gonioscopic examinations. This is the most anterior visible structure. The trabecular meshwork is probably the most important structure to be able to identify because it's typically the target structure engaged in MIGS. It is a spongy tissue located around the base of the cornea responsible for draining aqueous humor from the eye into Schlem's canal. And it's considered a primary site of resistance in the outflow pathway, which is why it is often targeted in MIGS treatment options. There are two visible areas of the trabecular meshwork, anterior and posterior. The anterior portion of the trabecular meshwork is usually less pigmented and is considered the non-filtering portion of the meshwork. The more posterior portion of the trabecular meshwork overlies Schlem's canal and is more active in the drainage process. This is the area of target for MIGS and other treatments like SLT. The scleral spur is a ridge of collagenous tissue that serves as an attachment point for the ciliary muscle and the trabecular meshwork. It plays a role in the outflow of aqueous humor. Ciliary body band. This is the visible portion of the ciliary body seen through on gonioscopy. It is involved with aqueous humor production and the regulation of lens shaping for focusing. While performing MIGS procedures, it is of utmost importance to know and understand this angle anatomy to correctly perform the procedure and know what to target and what to avoid. Lesson two, understanding the flow and obstruction of the outflow system. The trabecular outflow system consists of the trabecular meshwork, Schlem's canal, and the collector channels. These are the main areas where obstruction or damage affects the outflow system. Let's give them each a letter and describe them as we point out each location. So you have point A, the trabecular meshwork, which we already talked about. You can see it is a porous structure. The more fibrotic and rigid it becomes, the harder it is for aqueous humor to flow through it. This fibrosis process happens with aging and is one of the ways that patients can develop primary open angle glaucoma. Then there's B, the inner wall of Schlem's canal, which is lined with endothelial cells and is in direct contact with the trabecular meshwork. It plays a crucial role in the filtration and passage of aqueous humor into Schlem's canal. And C, the Schlem's canal, which is a circular channel situated in the angle of the eye that collects aqueous humor from the trabecular meshwork and facilitates its drainage into the episcleral veins. Then when the trabecular meshwork is unroofed, behind it you can now see D, the outer wall of Schlem's canal, which faces the sclera and connects to the collector channels, aiding in the further transport of aqueous humor out of the canal and into the episcleral venous system. And also E, the collector channels, which are small ducts connected to the outer wall of Schlem's canal. They are responsible for transporting aqueous humor from the Schlem's canal into the episcleral veins, ultimately facilitating its exit from the eye. Note, 
that the conventional trabecular pathway, which is the main root of aqueous humor outflow, is very different from the uveoscleral pathway that is associated with reduction of eye pressure with prostaglandin analogs. The uveoscleral pathway is pressure insensitive and allows aqueous humor to exit through the ciliary muscle to the superciliary space, not Schlem's canal. Most currently available angle surgeries specifically work on the trabecular outflow pathway, not the uveoscleral pathway. At any point within the trabecular meshwork, the lumen or walls of Schlem's canal, or the collector channels, the tissue can either get clogged with debris or herniations in addition to becoming fibrotic and resulting in the pores becoming more rigid and smaller. Ultimately, this limits the amount of flow of aqueous humor and results in an increased resistance and elevated eye pressure. So, how do you enhance outflow? Well, with the mechanism of action in goniotomy or trabeculotomy, you essentially remove or unroof the trabecular meshwork and the inner wall of Schlem's canal, whether partially or completely, which is up to 360 degrees of removal. Now, there are different ways to do this to the trabecular meshwork. You can excise it or incise it. When you make an excision of the trabecular meshwork, essentially removing a strip of tissue accessing within the anterior chamber using a device, this is considered goniotomy. When you enter a probe or catheter through the trabecular meshwork into Schlem's canal and then rotate or pull it into the anterior chamber, creating an incision or unroofing the trabecular meshwork, Work, this is considered trabeculotomy. Though there are different techniques with different skill requirements, the their terms are often used synonymously because both techniques remove trabecular meshwork and the inner wall of Schlem's canal effectively, which are the major sites of resistance to outflow of aqueous humor. And these procedures allow drainage directly into the exposed outflow collector channels of the outer wall of Schlem's canal. They are also both coded the same CPT code 65820 which is a widely accepted code. Lesson three, mix devices in this class and how they work. Now let's go over the devices that utilize this mechanism of action class. Goniotomy techniques can be attained with Trebectome, Trebex, Trebex Pro, the Kahook Dual Blade, KDB slash Glide, Scion, Streamline, and iAxis. For trabeculotomy procedures, this is performed with Gonioscopy Assisted, Transluminal Trabeculotomy, or GAT, and the Omni Surgical System. First up, we have the trabectome. What is unique about this device is that it is not just a hand piece, but an electrofluidic unit. The hand piece has built in irrigation and aspiration, which helps clear debris and manage intraoperative blood reflux by pressurizing the anterior chamber, which allows for a clear angle view. In addition, its rounded heel allows for precision control around the curvature of the eye while providing thermal protection to the collector channels. In addition, there is another key feature at the tip with an active and return electrode that is different from cautery. It generates plasma to molecularize the trabecular meshwork and remove it drag-free with minimal thermal effect. This ablation reopens the natural aqueous outflow passageway. The handpiece is connected to the electrofluidic unit, which controls these features by a foot pedal. Here is the trabectome in surgical action, where there is insertion of the tip through the TM into Schlem's canal depression of the pedal activates ablation while continuous irrigation and aspiration are also engaged. TM is excised partially for about three to four clock hours, typically in the nasal quadrant. Trabectome is indicated for infantile and adult glaucomas ranging from mild, moderate to severe disease. It is also indicated for narrow angle glaucoma and the trabectome tip is advantageous in helping to remove peripheral anterior synechiae for performing goniosynechial lysis in addition to following with TM removal. It is also indicated for secondary glaucomas like pseudoxfoliation or pigmentary glaucoma and it can be done as a standalone procedure or in conjunction with cataract surgery, which is the case for all goniotomy procedures. Now let's talk about the Trebex and Trebex Pro. They also work by excising a strip of the trabecular meshwork from the anterior chamber, allowing the natural outflow pathways to reopen. What is unique about the Trebex is that it has precision engineered serrated blades and a trapezoidal configuration blade head to enable edge-to-edge -edge removal of the trabecular meshwork. What then differentiates Trebex Pro from Trebex 
is the additional fluidic tubing that offers active irrigation and aspiration. This, like the trabectome, helps manage intraoperative blood reflux, allowing for a stable anterior chamber and visibility throughout the surgery. Yet, it is different in that there is a much lower cost of the Trebex Pro compared to that of the trabectome unit device. Trebex Pro is able to attach to any phago emulsification machine, and both the Trebex and Trebex Pro are single-use devices with a rounded heel for guided control, ensuring a smooth operation around the eye's arch. Here is the Trebex Pro in surgical action, where there is insertion of the tip through the TM into Schlem's canal with continuous irrigation and aspiration. TM is excised partially for typically three to four clock hours, again, typically in the nasal angle. Similarly to trabectome, these devices are designed for the surgical management of both infantile and adult glaucomas, ranging from mild to moderate to severe disease. They can be performed as standalone or in conjunction with cataract surgery. Then we have the Kahook Dual Blade, also known as the KDB or KDB Glide. The KDB is crafted from surgical grade stainless steel with a long thin shaft, which allows for easy access across the anterior chamber. Its plastic handle offers good ergonomics for the surgeon, ensuring precise control during the procedure. This is a single use device with a pointed tip used to pierce the TM, a ramp that lifts and stretches tissue as the device is advanced, two blades that excise the TM with tapered sides, and a rounded heel to optimize interface with Schlem's canal to manually expose the collector channels. Here is the KDB in surgical action. After entering Schlem's canal, excision of the trabecular meshwork is performed for up to three to four clock hours in either direction, typically in the nasal angle where collector channels are in highest quantity. KDB, like the trabectome, the trabex, and the trabex pro, is also indicated for managing various stages of both pediatric and adult glaucomas as a standalone option or in combination with cataract surgery. Also, like the trabectome handpiece, the KDB Glide is designed in a way that can aid in peripheral anterior sneaky removal for gonio lysis, followed by TM removal. Now let's look at the Scion device. What's special about the Scion is its bladeless tip, the toe, which facilitates a gentle goniotomy, minimizing tissue disruption, especially along the back wall of Schlem's canal. It also features a tissue collection window that helps you visualize the trabecular meshwork as it accumulates in the trap of the device. This makes it easier to ensure that you've effectively removed the desired tissue. Some of the other features aid in the handling of the device with grip texture to prevent slippage and the fin that provides visual and tactile orientation of the tip. Here is the Scion in surgical action where there is insertion of the tip through the TM into Schlem's canal. The TM is excised partially for typically three to four clock hours, again, typically in the nasal quadrant. Like the Trebectome, Trebex, Trebex Pro, and KDB Glide, the Scion is designed for the surgical management of excising trabecular meshwork in both infantile and adult glaucomas at various stages. Now let's look at the streamlined surgical system. This versatile device can be used as a, either a goniotomy procedure or canaloplasty procedure, depending on the technique used in surgery. We will discuss the canaloplasty feature more in a future video. The streamlined surgical system is implant-free, single-use device that is intuitive to learn and use with a one-hand operation and button depression of click pulse technology. It features an outer sleeve that retracts with button depression and it serves as a guide to position the tip of the dispensing inner cannula against the desired area within the anterior chamber. The inner cannula is fixed and does not move forward during the procedure. However, as one shifts the device horizontally to the left and right, a goniotomy can be created for at least three clock hours and roofing the trabecular meshwork to create an opening to Schlem's canal. Here's the stream line in surgical action. After insertion of the device, the blue outer sleeve is pressed against the pigmented TM, and then the button is depressed to retract the outer sleeve and deliver the inner cannula that pierces the trabecular meshwork. Then moving in a horizontal fashion, a goniotomy can be created. This is then repeated at least three times, typically in the nasal quadrant. Next is the I-axis trabecular trifine. I-axis is a single-use circular blade, 30 gauge titanium nitride coated, that can excise the trabecular meshwork 
network and inner wall of Schlem's canal. The device has a 300 micron deep built-in safety backstop and is made with an ergonomic custom tapered handle. A key advantage of the I-axis is its precision and goniotomy through the ability to utilize multiple incisions that excise 220 micron segments of the disease trabeculum to create an extensive opening over multiple clock hours. This device is indicated for manually cutting the trabecular meshwork in both pediatric and adult patients and it's designed to open the trabecular meshwork over an area greater than 90 degrees or three clock hours directly accessing Schlem's canal. Here is the eye access in surgical action. After entering the anterior chamber, the tip of the device presses against the TM and scores it in a circular fashion in multiple locations for up to three to four clock hours in either direction at the nasal angle. All of the previous devices discussed have been goniotomy procedures where TM tissue is excised with the device to expose Schlem's canal and the outflow channels. These devices allow for partial removal of the TM and when there is at least three clock hours or more of treatment performed, they can then qualify for the CPT code 65820. We will now discuss the trabeculotomy procedures, which can allow for up to 360 degrees of treatment of the trabecular meshwork. Before we wrap up, here's what I'd like you to do next to get the most out of the series. First, make sure to subscribe to the channel so you don't miss any videos in the series. We've got a lot of valuable content coming up that you won't want to miss. Next, if you know other eye care providers who would benefit from the series, share the video with them. Let's spread the knowledge and help more people feel confident about MIGS. While you're waiting for the series to start, I've got some resources for you. Check out my free report, Survey Insights, on understanding the top challenges surgeons face when adopting a new MIGS procedure. You'll find the link in the description box below. This guide is an excellent reference to help you prepare for your journey of adopting a new MIGS procedure so you have a better understanding of the expectations. And if you're still wondering how well does MIGS even work and what does a good MIGS outcome look like, well, take a look at this guide in the description box as well. Real Life MIGS Success, 15 clinical vignettes showcasing successful outcomes. This will give you a solid understanding of the effectiveness and benefits of these procedures so you can build on momentum to start taking action yourself towards getting these types of results. Additionally, if you want to better understand glaucoma and how to maintain healthy vision, consider getting a copy of the Glaucoma Guidebook, Expert Advice on Maintaining Healthy Vision. I wrote this multi-award winning Johns Hopkins Health book that empowers patients to protect their eye health through education and taking action. And for those who want a sneak peek of what's to come in our series, download MIGS Made Clear 101, a primer on microinvasive glaucoma surgery. This primer discusses basic angle anatomy, the outflow system, and briefly covers the various MIGS mechanisms of action we will discuss in detail in this series. You can find the link in the description box below. Wait, you may be wondering, what about the trabeculotomy procedures? You're right. It was a lot to cover in this video. So I also have another video that goes into the details of trabeculotomy techniques, as well as the ideal scenarios and contraindications for both goniotomy and trabeculotomy. You can watch that video by checking it out right here, right now, because when you add what you just learned to what is in this video, it's going to be way more powerful. See you there. This video has been brought to you by the AGE Initiative and iGlaucoma.